Hello and welcome, PML fans. I'm your host, Joseph Miller here, and here with me is my co-host, as usual, Stuart J. Mill. Yo, yo, how we going? Very well, and we are kicking Excellent. off a very late week five recap. <laughs> uh, schedules have been, been late little, Yeah, schedules have been a little twisted and torn, games have been a little late um, due to personal stuff and all that jazz, but we're here. And um, don't forget to go watch those battles. They are in the PML playlist as well as in the description of all the coaches with their links down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and show your support for the PML and the coaches. And we'll go ahead and get it started here now. All right. So this week, we start off with the Chartreuse versus the Navarhat Hoppers. And of course, that was my game, so I'll let Stu take it away. That we are starting with yours as usual. Sorry, not game of the week this week, um, but uh, you had a pretty convincing win. Uh, we decided to change the format of our recaps. We're not going to do a play-by-play because uh, it's just a little bit time-consuming for everyone involved, and we want you guys to go watch the video. So we're going to do more like a overview and highlights kind of thing. So what can we say, Joe? I um. Gotta gotta give credit to Best Bug Vickervolt there to uh, Best pulling bug, you through. Best Bug did the dang thing. Tentacruel didn't show up, and that's the only reason I brought it. And I just decided to swing with it, and it it, it went off. Well, you know, Vickervolt's one of those mods where its special attack is so high that even when you're, you know, having no special attack investment or you're just hitting things neutrally, it's still going to do a ton of damage, and it proved it. Um, for me, the moment of the match was where you O-code Thievil when it switched in. It was um, a brutal, a brutal turn for Misery and the Hoppers that uh, pretty much summed up the whole match, to be fair. Yeah, uh, he, he honestly thought I would switch out the Vickabolt, but I was ready to let Vickabolt die at that point. <laughs> and because, I mean, <laughs> Vickabolt did its job. It took out a Lycanroc and a, and it was going to do a big chunk to Garchomp and Exactly right. Um, you know, you also did a couple of. There was a couple of times where you switched in uh, Incineroar on the cliff key, and that blocked the prankster, which is always a plus. Um, you know, switcheroo is one of those moves that it's like trick. It can get really annoying if you get stuck with an item that you don't want. But uh, as you know, Dark Tides block prankster, and that works really well. Mm -hmm. And it just happened to where Kong Kelder came in and I was able to knock off the flame orb so it didn't do as much damage. I mean, it still hurt. Yeah. But it was it was a fun game nonetheless. Um, well, yeah, because when you, had the, when you knocked off the flame orb, it meant that you survived the next earthquake. Mm -hmm. Yes, you died to a mock punch straight after, but still that's one more move that you lasted. Yeah. And, and I mean... Klefki was, I think Klefki was gone at that point. Uh, Incineroar did its job and it was good to go down. Hmm. That's right. And um, then you got Vickavolt just clicking bug buzz and, you know, destroyed Kunkauda, uh with its minus one special defense after a close combat. Then you get to roost in front of the guard trump as it switches in. You get to bug buzz again. And that's when you destroy the evil. And it was just like, wow, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. But, um, what can I say? I feel like once again you had the momentum the whole match, and this time you didn't get hexed out. So yeah, I, I see it. I saw it pretty dominant. I take it, and it helped me uh, get my win streak going a little bit further. And I, 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 I take those <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, you were lucky to paralyze the Lycan Rock, but you know that's what you want to do, right? That's what it was there for. Mm -hmm. Bonus bonus and uh Vikavolt gets another kill and then Skarm does the rest so I mean unfortunately there was a scale shot miss and then you created a body press but I think you were already well on your way to a win there it just meant that you won 5-0 instead of maybe 3-0 or 4-0 so yeah, yeah that gets you back in the running what can I, we say yeah keep me in first place uh for now let's see how it goes for the week six I mean I know how it goes but you'll see how it goes. 
Yes, well, um, yeah, week six is going to be a good one. Because you're up against the chunks, right? So. Oh yeah, Danny is one of those one of those competitors. Yeah. Me and Danny have some history, and uh, I'm undefeated against him in the draft league, I believe, so far. So we'll see how that goes. But next up, we're going to go ahead and move over to the other side of the league, and it's going to be the Slowpokes versus what was now the Norfolk Nankatas. It was the Poor Fish. Um, and that team, ultimately, it dropped. So the next few weeks, you're not going to hear uh, – one of the games so this is the last game of that team season whichever ended up <laughs> being on the layout <laughs> but take so yeah the, um yeah once again apparato shows why he's a uh, force to be reckoned with um just knows his team so well he's playing really well making great predictions and when he's lost, it was close, but he's just been winning, 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 and it's been commanding every time. So, uh, for me, the moment of the match this week was when Simeon Ironhead flinched and then killed Dalmice. Um, it was important because it let him live for another turn. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, he took some Rocky Helmet tri- uh, chip, but crit- critted the Dalmice with acrobatics. And um, then it got to CC the Steelix down to the red. And that proved to be critical because Felix was carrying Psychic Fangs, so um, the Simeon then died. But it had done so much damage already, it was left to Serena and Co to mop up the rest of the team. It was very, very early on. Yeah. He, he, he led that, I think it was like a first turn or second turn max again with that Pasimian, and this time it yeah. just worked. It just took care of uh, all the threats on the uh, Poor Fish's team. I mean, the problem was that the Corfish left Blissey, which obviously, you know, it's only weak to fighting, and mm-hmm. Simeon's a fighting type. Duh. But, um, I mean, Apparator brought AV, so he knew that Blissey, even if it was for some reason offensive, it wasn't going to do much damage at all. So he decided to Dynamax turn one, and then, um, you know, he smashed Blissey for 75%, and the, it took a little sn- a nudge from the flamethrower. And you know, you're letting, you're letting Persimian get off all these max knuckles. Mm-hmm. And, you know, plus one speed right. from the airstream. Exactly right. Plus one speed from the airstream, plus one attack. And he's got one max turn to go, and you've got to think about how you're going to stop it from happening. And what he does is sends out downwise to protect, but that's obviously not going to last much longer, because as I mentioned, he um, he specifically says that he's going to ironhead to try and get a flinch. Mm-hmm. Does that. And then he crits an acrobatics to kill it. So, you know, he's only just finished his max turns. It's about four turns into the battle, and the core are already down two mons. So, I'm not going to say it's a cakewalk, but it's as close as you're going to get. Apart from like a turn one belly drum set up by Charizard or something. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Slowpokes had a game plan. They put it to work, and it did. It did work for them. It, it let them strong, kept the momentum going, and there was no turning back in that battle. Yeah. And also another great tech, I thought, was not really a tech because it's quite common, but low kicking the Nahaligo was a great play. Um, if it was Scarf, it was going to be a problem, but slowing it down so it would be neutral, all good. That was a really smart play from Serena, so um, it completely negated the Nahaligo from doing anything. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, and- I mean, it sludge away for Serena, who survived, low kick and slowed down, and then it became faster, power whipped it to death. And then what does um, Alice have left to do except send Drake a mission? And we all know what happened there. So, um, you know, you can't lock into Outrage when the other team's got a Fury. It's just a really erroneous yeah, play. Even if, it, even if you think, even if you've got no choice, you think, except to click outrage you always got another choice because you've got four moves there so don't click outrage because mm-hmm. it's a free set especially when the setup on is slurp up because he's been dying to get that belly drum off and what happened he clicks exactly. belly drum and even alakazam, alakazam took 95 percent for drain punch so <laughs> she was in trouble and um yeah it was gg i'm um, commanding performance honestly just blew me out blew me out of the water there yeah, GG to both uh, when i was watching it great work there operator that that really was a demand. Oh, not to mention that not. I was going to say, especially with the four hundred win, it'll boost his differential too, which 
could be handy coming down to the other end of the competition. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll see about those standings later. But I think uh, there's a few coaches running away with the the playoff spots in those leagues, in that league, on that division, I should say. But that brings us to our third match, where we come back to the Canto side, and we have the Chicago Chonks versus Team Tempest, and this is another one of those doozy battles. Yeah, well, I actually, this was going to be my um, game of the week until I watched the actual game of the week, which we'll talk about later. But, um, you know, two great players. Kiwi's been unfortunate, like probably not the best record, but has been playing really well. Mm -hmm. And same with Danny. Once again, really great player. Hasn't been playing the best, but, you know, can turn it on on the day. And um, this was another example of that. I mean, for me, the moment of the match was where... Rotom didn't break Poltergeist sub with a hydro pump thanks to the light screen, which then allowed it to set up and sweep. It could have set up and sweep anyway, maybe, depending on, you know, you never know how much HP it's going to get down to, but for me, that was the moment where I was like, Danny's got this. So, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, that was a very creative way of how Danny used the Magna Zone at the very beginning of the battle, confusing Kiwi into, you know, there, there's the volt switch part right after the screens because Kiwi kind of read the screens. He, he said it in his in his video on his side, but then yeah, he was yeah. like, "Is he gonna volt switch? Is he gonna attack? What is he gonna do?" And that's when uh, Danny had the advantage of teleporting after the fake. That out. was probably another. Yeah, I was gonna say teleport was a great play from Megazone, knowing that Kado was probably coming, so it was gonna block all the volt switches. Um, and it gave him maximum initiative, which is what you want. Mm -hmm. And um, Azu this week was liquid, um, was banded, so you know hit Rotom for a massive thirty percent with a uh, resistant liquidation, which is really nice. Yeah. And then he, um, he went straight to Azu with the screens up. I thought he was going to go to Pulte guys to break, but no, he used Azu to break instead because of that Rotom. Yeah, I think. He, I don't know, I don't know about his mindset when it comes to Azu, but I think he doesn't see Azu as his setup and sweep mon. Mm -hmm. He sees it as a denting holes for other monsters because everyone's going to predict Belly Durham Azu, right? You can't. The one week someone does it, he's going to bring it, which is mm -hmm. kind of like the surprise factor. But I, li I like how he's bringing it. He's brought the Paris trap set. He's brought Banded. He's brought just four attack. Like he's just bringing all different kinds of Azus, and you know, people just. Get sick and tired of seeing just the belly drum Azu, so it's nice to see uh, a bit of variation, which is once again um, what Danny's really good at is beating teams at the team builder. He's a really good team builder, so yeah, I think this is uh, proof of that. And that that shows how draft um, is uh, different to most other play styles because uh, yeah. we saw Danny bring uh, three different variations of Azu already, and and it's only week five, and he still hasn't brought the belly drum set. Mm. So there's just so much you can do in draft. No, exactly. Facing a coach like Danny, it really shows the creativity you can put into these sets. <clears throat> but also, in this game, he knew exactly where his win con was. He knew it was going to be Poltergeist. So even when Crook was out in front of Rotom, he you know, had a four-shot scale shot. Fortunately, to get the four shots, sure, but it got it into banded Aquajet range if he needed to use Aquajet later on. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, as we well know, he didn't need it. Poltergeist, Poltergeist subbed um, and wrote on hit a hydro pump. It didn't break the sub. And uh, that, as we say, is a GG. The shell, the shell smash gets it done. Yeah, that was a big one. Um, the Dan That Danny using that sub to his advantage to thwart the sucker punch because Kiwi had it and he just couldn't risk it. And he's lucky he didn't risk it yeah. because he broke the sub. That's right. And the other play was that um, he didn't max straight away. He clipped Shadow Ball to eliminate the Cinderace. Mm -hmm. um, so he waited till Rope Bombi came in and then he decided to max. Kiwi maxed as well. Um, you know, survived one max stuff or max Mindstorm, can't remember which order it was in. But, um, you know, he max guard to waste a turn. But then it's. It's all over by then. Party guys doesn't need to be maxed to it's a, sweep. It's a, heck of a, um, it's a heck of a game to win. If you have no, yeah. If, if you have no resist, then you're in trouble, and it proves to be the case. 
um, stored power destroyed Damanitan and yeah, he just ran through with stored power and shadow ball and it was a 5 0 win. So I wrote in, I wrote on my notes that Danny got his mojo back and that's how exactly how I felt. I found that he was um, he knew his game plan, he executed it and he didn't get hacked to um, death like um, with crits and stuff. So yeah, another dominant win. Yeah, and we'll see if he can carry that momentum into next week. Um, next up, we have the Cardinals versus the Pecatonica Fire Squirrels. And this is a fun battle. <clears throat> this was a really fun battle. Um, I've been quite impressed with Shelby's play since she's joined. Mm-hmm. But uh, once again, the Cardinals are one of the, one of the top, top teams at the moment. And... Orizan showed why in this battle, despite not everything going his way. So he showed great strategy, and he also showed a, a little bit of luck <laughs> in one point of the battle. Yeah, exactly. So I think we're thinking about the same point here. My moment of the match was where he got off a double protect in front of the Flareon. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Blaziken, Blaziken with a speed boost, caught off and runs protect to get their guaranteed speed boost first off. But... Uh, yeah, because um, I thought it was really clever of Shelby to use Max Strike to slow it down. Yeah, I was and the fact. So the first speed boost got back up to neutral, and then the second speed boost put it back to plus one, and then it was um, going to be hard for Shelby to break it down after that. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say it was nice to see the guts set of Flareon brought. Yeah, you don't see this week um, much in draft league in general. Yeah. But um, after me being critical of it last week, it was nice to see the guts come this week, and um, did, did a considerable amount of damage to P two uh, with Dynamax. Um, even in fact, I killed it. I killed it with the sun boosted one, sun boost and guts boost max flare. But of course, that brought Blaziken out, and it protects the first turn to waste the Dynamax, but. Protect doesn't stop you from the effects of the max move, so that's when it slowed it, slowed it down. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, then it, of course. No, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, and um, you know, I even got to destroy Flareon with the uh, EQ and everything. So it was yeah. good. It was good play. Yeah, because she had to show you that Flareon um, has guts. Yeah. She she ain't gonna bring it for no reason. That's right. So it was. <laughs> It was going to have caused a lot of problems if it was allowed to get off too many attacks, but thankfully the blades can't go faster. Um, you know, Dustin and I trick roomed, and uh, the Chardinal sent out Guzzlord, and as we know, Guzzlord is a beast, but it's just so slow that it normally doesn't. It's very much at the lower end of the Ultra Beast tiers, but. Uh, if you get it into Trick Room, then it does all the damage, and it proved it this week. Yeah, it's it's nice to see one of the lesser Ultra Beasts actually get to do some work. That's right, and it um it took nothing from Dust Noir, and then it you know got an attack beast boost when it uh, killed it. So it was kind of um, interesting that Shelby set up the, the Trick Room and then had it. She was basically punished by it, by um, having, this, having, having to send out Tauros, and Guzzle was plus one, and then it had its life orb knocked off, and that meant that Guzzle survived a body slam, and then it killed the Tauros with brick break. So, you know, Tauros probably would have killed Guzzle with that body slam if it had the life orb still, but yeah. that wasn't to be. And then um, with two beasts, the last toys to try and get the fire squirrels back into it, and. Uh, it shell smashed, but it got crit again. I'm pretty sure it got crit last week too, by um, this week by a knockoff. And yes, the blast toys took out the Guzzlord, but it was GG from there pretty much. Um, yeah. And, Cardinal um... still had Max up their sleeve, and sure enough, they brought out their Starmie, and that was it. Yeah, that and was it. that thought process going when she got that trick room up. This is where I wish she would uh, talk during her battle, so we could have like really knew what she was trying to do with that. But and it evidently backfired on her with that Guzzlord. So it was, it was only a, I would say only a three zero win to the Cardinals, but it was once again it was a convincing three zero win. It's um just 
unfortunate for the Cardinals that other teams had more dominant wins this week. So mm -hmm. definitely heading in the right direction. Definitely still one of the top teams. And Shelby has just, um, you know, been bringing interesting sets and been playing really well. Has just unfortunately faced up against some of the top teams in the first couple of weeks. So hopefully she pulls it through next week. I'm pretty sure she has the, uh, the, the wishy-washy. So that'll be a good one. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a... Uh going to be a cat fight for sure <laughs> <laughs> yes i will well that brings us to our next battle which brings us back to the other side we've been flip-flopping all <clears throat> all video long <laughs> we got the uh, new orleans infernate versus the vegas club jangmo o's yeah that, that's by accident by the way i just i write the book um, write my notes on that order that i watch them and i don't really pay attention to what divisions they're in but um this week, I, uh, yeah, this match here was uh, the Infernapes and the Jim So, for me, the man of, uh, the moment of the match was I had a tie. I couldn't decide between the two. I'll see what you think. Mm -hmm. um, it was either the Thunderbolt Paralyze and the Mimikyu, or it was just the Charizard Belly Drum. One or the other. Well, you I know think they both were. I'm yeah. a big Charizard stand, so, you know, I, I love when yeah. uh, Charizard gets to put in work. But I think that uh, that Thunderbolt Terra was very clutch on uh, Jang Mao's part in that battle. It's hugely fortunate. And uh, yeah, because it breaks the disguise and it got the Terra. So it was like, I felt Melvin's been having some terrible luck in a few of his, few of his games, and this is no um, different. Exception. And did, did, it, did it get a full Terra as well? If I remember correctly, or uh, was that, yeah, was it a possibly. Turn later? With, with, I think it was a turn later, but um, I mean, he did ninety percent to the Rotom with Shadow Sneak, and then the Thunderbolt paralyzed him, mm -hmm. and then they switched to Hydreigon, predicting another Shadow Sneak, and then Hydreigon destroyed the Mimikyu with Steel Wing. So, <laughs> yeah, um, and the fact that the fact that they, the fact that uh, the JMO even bought. Steel wing is great, obviously specifically for Mimikyu, but um, yeah, I, Mimikyu, one of those Pokemon, it either does, seems to do heaps or nothing. There's no in between. It doesn't do it have an okay match. It either does a lot of work or no work, and this is one of the matches where it did no work. So yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like the whole match it was coming down to was Charizard going to belly drum, and sure enough, it did. I just had a feeling. I had a feeling. Yeah, I, I like how in uh, his uh, in Jang Mao side, uh, inconsistency side, uh, he, he threw a jab at the recap and was well not a jab, but he he shouted out the recap, saying, "Yeah, I did tell them that I would do it, so here I am doing it." <laughs> He's a yeah. man of his word. <laughs> he is a man of his word, and it was perfect timing too. Uh, you know, you see some people try and get off belly drums in non-perfect circumstances, but I don't think you could have asked for a better situation um, in front of Drek Yeah, Drek is going to do not very... much. It doesn't, it's not very powerful. And even if he does switch into Chansey, predicting a special move, which he did, mm -hmm. what do you do? You, um, you know, Ch Chansey eats the scold, teleports out, Charizard comes back in, and then it's easy as belly drum. Mm -hmm. In front of Hitmon Chan, yeah, yeah, and you get that at plus max. six, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna eat. It's... Yeah, you get that max, and you're, you're just gone at that point. Yeah, especially once um, Togekiss died to the max airstream. Uh, mm -hmm. It was fast. It was powerful. Melvin had, I mean, he'd already lost Magmortar earlier, which is usually his max mod, so he lost the ability to max his preferred mon um, at the start of the match, max track load, but it still got blown back. And then left poor Hitmon Chan to die. He did, what, like one HP with bullet punch? Yeah, it didn't do much. <laughs> and um, after the first few weeks being heaps of close matches, thanks to timers and whatnot, we've had another blowout win, and it was 5-0. So inconsistency, and it shows how consistent they're being with three big wins since they joined the league yeah this week a lot of coaches have shown how explosive they can be in their play style 
and other coaches got to watch out for that in these next few weeks, especially with the playoffs getting pretty tight. Yes, yeah, exactly. Especially when you've got teams who weren't doing so well at the start catching up, mm -hmm. <laughs> such as because, um, of course, uh, Vegas Club were they joined the league week three and they've had three wins since. The team they took over had was one and one, so now they're four and one, which is you can't ask for much more in week five. Mm -hmm. I think most people would take four one if you said, "Do you want four one?" If you can't have five zero, of course. Oh yeah, you take four one. Te technically, taking over a team isn't easy, and he's actually adapted. He didn't draft this team, and he's been making it work. Exactly right. Go Charizard, eh? Yeah. I think he only had like three changes too to the team. He didn't change much to it. Yeah, it's well, it's tending to blow it apart. But if it's got all the pieces that you need for a team, even if it's not Mons, you're totally happy with. There's an argument to keep most of the team together and just bring in a few comfort picks or where you see weaknesses, strengthen them. But yeah, no, he's done really well. That team's looking good. Uh, keep it up, guys. Uh, Melvin, I know you can bounce back. There's a few weeks left. And that brings us to our next battle in the New York Aqua Jets versus the CF Cramorants. This is another doozy battle. <laughs> doozy is right. Um, <laughs> my moment of the match here is quite early on, in fact. It's where Weezing is taking pretty much zero damage from Escavalier. Thanks to Escavalier being minus one and there being a reflector. Um, for me, it was a moment of the match because it meant that Alex was wasting his Dynamax. Mm -hmm. And if you can waste your opponent's Dynamax, whether it be from fast subs or protects or whatever you have to do, basically, full paras, you do it. And in this case, having a minus one Escavalier and maxing it was um, risky. And, you know, Max Darkness did very little at minus one with reflect. And then instead of going for a second Max Darkness, he goes for a Max Steel as Scrub switched back into Bronzong. So it was like, he was kind of kind of like... Um, he read him. He read him like a book. He, yeah, 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 exactly. He was second guessing himself as well, I think Alex was. So um, first of all, he probably second guessed whether he should have maxed it all, but... Um, yeah, he, he did say something about it in his video. The second he maxed it, he was like, why did I do that? And yeah, he, so, and he shouldn't have, but you know, heat of the moment. He yeah, it's one of the, exactly, exactly. It's one of those things where you can't take it back either once you've done it. So, I mean, you can recover from a bad switch, but you can't recover really from a bad Dynamax, and <clears throat> that's kind of what happened. But um, as we know, the there was heaps of back and forward, back and forward, and it would have been a regulation win to scrub, but um, yeah, Alex managed to run out the timer in the last minute yeah it's, it's another switching. one of those um you're trying to fight back and the game's already over type deal and it, it's just hurting your opponent's differential at that point but you know i mean yeah so he wants to preserve his differential i mean it's timer is the thing it is the way to do it it's maybe not the most popular way to do it but it's still part of the game yeah, it just for me, it soured what was a really well played match. Like both players have played really well. They were back and forward. Alex has been playing Pilus Wine really well. Um, I love Pilus Wine. He's a underrated mod. He's very strong considering how defensive he is. Mm -hmm. And you know, then you got team, teams that involve Gyarados and Hatterene and um, big players like this. The fact you got a mod like Pilus Wine coming in and doing things and a scavalier for that matter then you know that's that's credit to the coaches for playing them properly but yeah i don't know about the end the end is just gonna stick in my crawl a little bit yeah i also think it was a steal uh stealing the spotlight from a pokemon who kind of deserved it in that battle hmm. and i know that scrub is desperate to get his uh, mascot pick cramorant giving him a time to shine and it's you know it's maxing and doing things like that but yeah i don't know we'll see we'll see how it comes together for the cremorants in future weeks but i mean they you can't you can't say they didn't deserve the win but it's just a shame they couldn't get the complete win they had to go, yeah. go to timer yeah, so um, it that just shows that the guys kind of crave in that division as well yeah exactly and the um 
you know, if you're missing your land, then that's going to be a problem going forward. But I you know life gets in the way. People understand that. Mm-hmm. It's just a shame that the uh, the timer exists. We wouldn't be having this conversation if the timer wasn't a problem, and that's Pokemon's fault. No, no coach's fault. Yeah, that, that's Pokemon's fault to begin with. I mean, they they should have changed it with all the patches and updates they've done. But you know, that's a moot point at this point because Gen Nine's coming soon. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, they fix it then. Exactly. Okay, We're all that, hanging out for that. We'll hopefully get some news in the next few days, eh? Hey? Oh, yeah. That's going to be exciting. <laughs> but for now, we're going to go ahead and move on to the Crushing Silvalis versus the Rebellion. Oh, this was another cracker. I really enjoyed watching this match, too. It was um, another back and forward. And for me, the moment of the match was where Specs Lazzle absolutely deleted Nero King off the face of the planet. Um... Followed closely, a close second was Flygon missing the dual wing beat so that Sylveon could kill it. And that cost the game more, I think, than the Nidokin dying, but I just loved the highlight of Slazzle just clicking overheat and Nidokin going from 100% to 0% in the blink of an eye. Yeah, Slazzle is certainly the workhorse in that battle. It's, it, it really was, and once you get some of those, one of those semi-low tier mons where you know, it's a low tier in general because it's frail and it's weak to a common type, which is ground, but it's so fast that if you can get a sub up or if you can get in and get something slower or, you know, get off a nice strong hit, Specs Laz was one of its best. I know a lot of people bring the Toxic Protect Corrosion set, but nothing wrong with Specs Lazzle and this match proved it. Yeah. I mean, Plus it two to- overheat. It has oh, some stabs that really smack things, so it's like, it, you can't go wrong with it. Yeah. And also, um, I noticed that some had some really good predictions around its maxing, its new, its new Celeste, a new Celestine that was going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you got Max, Max Flare raising your attack, uh, raising and putting the sun up, but then you predict the Celesteel is switching out and max ooze and that raises the special attack and yeah it doesn't do much to fly on but um the, the thought process is what impressed me here and like he immediately switched the slazzle out instead of you know knowing that how strong it was going to be later and despite having one turn of max left over switched it out and brought in giggle mm. and it's that kind of you know that's a pretty big brain play a lot of people once you max you stay in but i've noticed in the last couple of weeks People have been switching out after one or two max turns. And if it preserves a win con, do it. Do it. If you need a max guard once to to stop a sweep or something, do it. It's a great play. Yeah, it certainly showed the versatility of a D max turns, like you said. Because, yeah. you know, some people use it and, offensively. Um, also, so the pr- do, but defensively, yeah. it worked out. Exactly, but um, yeah, so after the max turns, of course, you got Flygon out and um, misses a scale shot against Sylveon, which is, um, sorry, he clicks scale shot and um, Sylveon switches in, so it's immune, and then it misses a dual wing beat into the Sylveon, which dies, you know, so those kind of um, interplays are what can cost matches, and this is, this was it. Flygon was all boosted from its max turns and Sylveon cleaned it up. And then yeah. we all know what happened with Salazar. <laughs> like, you know, Dusty always says, uh, if it's not 100%, it's 50%. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But also, um, think about another possible moment of the match was when Salazar survived the Arcanine's Flare Blitz on four. That was uh, probably that brutal. Was if I was... Uh, yeah, if I was Lucian, I would have been like, no, are you serious? I lived on four. I know it's a resistant hit, but come on. <laughs> it's a Salazzle. Yeah, it's a Salazzle. Uh, come on. How much bulk did he have into that thing? Exactly. And then, you know, Spec Sludge Bomb did so much. It did so much, in fact, that some allowed it to sit in against the Mr. Ryan, where it knew it wasn't going to kill it, but it was going to do so much damage that it was worth it for the uh, um, extra draw to come in. Yeah. And, um, you know, tank, tank to freeze dry. <laughs> yeah, it was a, certainly a, t- a nail biter kind of at the end. But, you know, 
that Salazar really put in the work and got him set up to where he needed to be to win. Well, exactly. And, you know, Sal Steele had to get off the double protect and stuff just to survive as long as it did. And, yeah, the game went to timer. The game went to timer, but... Yeah, yeah. Silly was able in to the last minute... For a little bit. Yeah. It was apparent to me that um, Lucian was trying to get enough health to survive a school from the slow king. So I don't think it was a timer stall, in my opinion. But, you know, so normally if you saw a double protect in the last minute or something, you think, oh, they're just trying to stall it out. But yeah, I mean, to me, it, that was a legitimate was a play to try and survive play. the school. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I can't discredit him for that, to be, to be fair. So... Yeah, it brought, brought to an end a very close match, but it was just a little bit unfortunate with the timer. Once again, we're going to say it every time, but mm -hmm. yeah, well played but, for both for both players there. Some yeah, big plays from Mon's like. If there was if timer wasn't such an issue, uh, Silla Silla might have been able to pull yeah. it back with the bulk. So it's like he was trying to win that game. Yeah, exactly. And um, I mean, if Silla Silla got burned or something, it might be a little bit different. But with Leaf Seed. And sloping out, it was just going to be a slow, painful death for someone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> one of those matches. But yeah, for me, um, player of the match was uh, Slazor for sure, but you can't go past uh, Sylveon for cleaning up the Flygon, even if it was by pure luck. Mm -hmm. Hey, like, like uh, they say in our trade, we take those. <laughs> exactly, we take those. We take those, especially when it's, um, you know, you've tried to set up your Haxorus and it gets leech seated and so you've got a team with Seller Speedless, so you take those, for sure. Exactly. And that brings us to our last match of the game, and that is the uh, Virginia Victinis versus the Wiki Waki Wishy Washy. And that has just been a fun one to yep. say. It has been. So I watched this game last, which is kind of funny because it's just purely by chance which game. Games I watch. I don't watch in a particular order. Mm -hmm. And um, by the end, I was like, "Wow, this overtakes my game of the week," which doesn't happen very often. Normally, I have in my head which game's going to be the best, and then get surprised if it doesn't. And yeah, this was, this was an absolute cracker for me. Unfortunately for Lily, the moment of the match was um, sacking Rillaboom to Heliolus late in the match. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel like she should have sacked the Rhyperia. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely should have set the Rhyperia for the free switch so she could grass and glide. Um, Kingdra just had too much to do from that point. And yeah, just killed Helios you know, with the Draco, but when you've got a Ferramosa in the back that you know is going to die to grass and glide, mm -hmm. and then it's just going to clean you up. And that's what happened. It was, I'm not going to say she was in front at that point, but it was definitely very even at that point. And the fact that Mike managed to eke out a 1 0 at the end. Yeah. Super entertaining. Super close match. If you haven't if you haven't watched it, I recommend watching it to whoever's listening. But um yeah, what do you think? And the big thing about that battle is uh Lily's a great battler in a sense. Like uh she knows what she wants to do with her team. But she always gives up the rain way too early into the match. And I think that's what's hurting mm. in these few, last few weeks. Because she she's always in a position to win, but she always doesn't have the tools towards the end of the battle she needs to pull it off yeah well that's exactly right and even um you know kendra is good at sweeping but if you know you've got limited rain turns or your rain setter dies you can use kendra just to punch holes especially when you've got a mon like rillaboom in the back that can ko pokemon with grassy glide sometimes even when it's resisted so or even in yeah i don't know like I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, even um, at the team builder, like the, the sets are fine. She's bringing in perfect sets. Mm -hmm. She's playing really well 90% 90, 90 of the match, but it's like a football team playing well for the you know first three quarters, and then in the last quarter, they switch off and get annihilated. You can't play well for three quarters. You've got to play well for the whole game, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I'm feeling is happening. Unfortunately, with the wishy-washies, there are, Swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah, and um, what I think she should do is, uh, does she have more than another water type than Polytoad and Kingdra? I, don't, I can't remember. Off the I top don't think of my so. Head. 
but if she does she should, she should potentially try to max that more often instead of repair so she can get more range yeah. lines up and because yeah. obviously kings are being a tier two it can't max itself like uh, most people would want it to. Mm. so you know there, there's ways to make Kingdra better. I mean, you can even <clears throat> if you know you're gonna play risky with Politoed like she likes to do, even try to just scarf it. Yeah. Just, you know you have some rain turns. Yeah. You know the rain turns gonna end. Uh, even scarf will help Kingdra yeah. out there. So yeah, I mean, as we know, Mike's been loving his Archaeops. He's been leading in most matches, and it's been just annihilating people with focus session endeavor and yet every week someone seems to fall to focus session endeavor yeah i mean if it, um, if and in this case more. it was the <laughs> and in this case it was the polytoad as you mentioned yeah mm -hmm. exactly right so i don't know if people need to start bringing rock blast or you know two double hit moves to try and break that sash earlier um because once polytoad died and that's it there was no king had to come in and use the rain turns when they're available, but then do you want to just let it go down because it's got no rain? No, you want to save it for later. Mm -hmm. And as it showed, it, it was carrying a jet pack this week, which was um, pretty good tech, I thought. Gets you a, um, basically a free Draco, because you can Draco and then get out of there, mm -hmm. which is what happened. And, oh, she bought Kabutops this week. Yeah. That was her other, her other water type. And did she get another max uh, rain turn with that? Or no, I think uh, she ran out of rain by the time it was done. No, and she didn't get it to get rain yeah. up again. I feel like if she could have got rain up again with Kabutops, then that, she could have won that game with the King Drift play game. It's true. It's almost a meme now that um, Mandibuzz dies really quickly, and <laughs> sure enough, that's what happened. I got Oko'd by Stone Edge this week. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know if what he was expecting to happen, but it just seems like it's a bad omen for Mandibuzz to be sent in. <laughs> but uh, Kabutops actually put in a bit of work because I think it crit the Aromatis as well. I know it definitely hit it with a Stone Edge. I think it crit it. And, I mean, Aromatis got a wish off. Yeah. It, but um, it's just bulky, if but it had killed it. has been doing some work. Exactly. And... If it had died there instead of getting the wish off, it might have, the match would have been turned on its head right there because um, it could then protect and that stored out the last terrain turn, which is, of course, important for Kabutops. Mm -hmm. And um, then Lily obviously realized that Kabutops was going to be stalled out by uh, Aromatis wish protecting, so switched to Lightbard. And what happens? Lightbard died instantly to Moonblast. So, that period of play there pretty much turned out how Lily's game went. Started so well and then ended up with an Oko from full. And uh, full credit to Mike there, realizing how weak Lily's team was to Aromatis, despite it having only one attacking move. Mm -hmm. And um, Aromatis max, which you don't see very often. And it almost killed Rillaboom. And, you know, that could have been. The difference of the match right there but Lily saved it to be to her credit but then later on sacked it so uh, yeah it was like well played there not so well played later but Mike's been on top of his game puff for a couple of moments and yeah. a couple of matches but yeah it was a super super close match and I um I think that they both deserve better records yeah like I said, uh, that, league is, I think really well. that league is real doggy dog, and they they know what they're doing over there. Like, it's kind of one-sided in a way, but, I mean, a lot of these battles could have went either way at the same time. So, it's it's just one, exactly. it's just one of those divisions. And that brings us to our Pokemon of the Week. I believe, and that is going to be none other than Ulti guys for the Chicago Chunks with its six kill sweep versus Team Tempest. Smashed it. Yeah, it it it, it was obvious. Nothing else got close to six kills. Ulti guys put in the work. It it ate some uh, brunch and then went back to work. humor there 
<laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. But congratulations, Danny, again uh, with that sweep. And uh, we'll see who becomes the MVP for next week. Anything you want to add, Stu? Not as far as the MVP goes, no. All right, and shout out to Prince of Spirits uh, for the art. I had to get it from Google. So if you're watching, here's your shout out. Um, that brings us lastly to our uh, weekly recap <clears throat> rankings. Or rankings. There we go. I couldn't find the word. And That's right. I'll go ahead and take care of the Kanto side as usual, and you can take care of the Galar side. And this Sounds week, good. we actually have a chart of so me, luckily still in first place with the 4 and 1 with the 13 differential. Uh, then we have Vegas Club, Jangma O, creeping into second place with 4 and 1 with plus 9. Chicago Chonks moving up with that big differential win to 3 and 2. Um, in third place and right underneath them is Team Tempest at negative four differential at three and two so depending on how the next weeks go it could still go either way there uh, position five we have the CF Cramorant at two and three with zero differential uh, sixth we have the New Orleans Infernapes two and three with negative five differential the Navarhata Hoppers one and four with negative eight differential and Lastly, but not leastly, in number eight, we have one in four New York Aqua Jets at negative eight differential. And from what I see here, um, six through one can all still be in a tight competition. Seven and eight with three weeks ago, they still have a chance, but it's going to be tough. Again, need a few results to go their way, mm-hmm. but not mathematically out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Alrighty, so in first place, the only unbeaten team in the league still is the Arizona Cardinals. They're five and zero. They've got a plus twelve differential. But um, looking at their heels are the McKessie Park Slowpokes, and they're four and one. They have a plus eleven differential, so that's still going to be a close battle there for first place. Mm-hmm. Also with a four and one differential, but uh, four and one record, but with a uh, far less different to it, plus one, is the Virginia McTinis. And then in fourth place, we have the Crushing Silvales. They're two and three, with a plus seven differential. And that pretty much sums up the playoff race in that division, because the next four teams are all one and four. We have the uh, Wiki Wiki Wishy Washies. They're one and four with a minus five differential. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the Rebellion. They're one and four with a minus seven differential. Then you've got the Pentatonica Fire Squirrels. They're one and four with a minus nine differential. Then you've got the new team, then the Carters. They're one and four with a minus fifteen differential. So, um, pretty defined compared to the first division. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the the teams in fifth to eighth can still play spoilers to the other teams um, above them. But the the different matches that are you know it's. The Chardinals and the Slowpokes and the Victinis, they're definitely in the box seat. And the Savalis can still make it with a couple of results going their way. So it's not all done and dusted for that division, but it's tough when you've got an unbeaten team because then it's like everyone else is playing for the second spot. But Mm -hmm. who knows what will happen to the Chardinals in the weeks ahead. Yeah, like I said, uh, well, like you were saying, um, the first two spots seem to be tight, tight tight-notched. The last two spots in uh, three and four, they they could crumble and fall, or they can uh, overtake it and just lock themselves in. And it's, there's three long weeks to go. We'll see what happens. That's right. You just need one team to go on a run, and then it uh, blows the whole division wide open. So I hope no one's feeling discouraged. I hope people still feel like they've got something to play for, even if they might be out of easy playoff contention you know you can still play spoiler to other teams and that's always entertaining for viewers like myself so give it a go yeah like i always tell people in eighth place hey if you ain't going to playoffs take someone with you that's right that's right it's a good way to think about it all right well that is it for our week five recap uh week six recap is coming very soon uh probably the day after this one goes up and 
like i said guys make sure y'all go watch those battles like subscribe follow everything let's show these guys some support so coaches want to come back to pml because pml shows that love all right guys Stu, any last words for the audience here uh, just thanks for listening and once again guys appreciate the support um if you have any comments or tips or pointers or you know you want to tell us off that we've done something wrong if you want to explain a set or a move please comment um joe and i will be on there commenting and replying to comments so whether it's on the discord server or whether it's on the youtube video itself please do give us some feedback and uh yeah we'll see you next well it's going to be less than a week but we'll see you for week six See you week six in a couple of days. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.